Josie is the sweetest, most lovable little girl. She's just so full of love and she laughs all the time. She's just so joyful. She likes like things like bright lights and like toys that make a lot of sounds. And she just laughs a lot. Amara is a, a beautiful, happy, joyous child. The thing I just love about her most is these big, wonderful brown eyes that follow me around and follow you around. And she's just a, a, a gorgeous child. The first time I realized that Josie wasn't developing correctly, she was about four months old, and I noticed she wasn't tracking with her eyes. And that's really when the journey of trying to find a diagnosis began. At seven months, she started to have seizures. The seizures were, for me, um, horrific to watch, and I felt, I've never felt quite that helpless. I'll never forget the day that we sat in a geneticist's office and he told us Josie has something called Fox G1 syndrome. He told me that the lifespan is teens at best. When we received Amara's diagnosis, the best way I can describe what that felt like was grief. We were, like every family, shocked, and we went through grief and didn't know what to do. My entire world just closed in on me at that moment. I like to think about Fox G1 syndrome as being a domino effect. You have something that's wrong with only one gene, but when that gene doesn't work properly, it impacts all the other things that it controls, and so you end up with a much bigger problem. You're sitting up so nice. Josie can't do many things. She can't walk, she can't crawl, she can't sit up without falling over, she can't use her hands with purpose, she can't feed herself. She suffers from epilepsy and she's fed with a feeding tube. As you process it, you realize that your child is not going to have a career. They are not going to get married. They are not going to be able to do the basic things that other kids can do, like play soccer. And I think it's as those things started to really seep into to, to me, into my being, is when I really, you know, that, that's when I felt my lowest of lows. It had been about four months and I decided that either I was going to continue feeling sorry for myself and continue being sad, or I was going to look at this like, for me, I've looked at everything that's happened in my life as an opportunity and a gift. Um, and I decided to take, take the latter. Our story is three moms from across the globe all going through the same devastating experience with our children, all having seizures, all being told your child will never, 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 never. We decided to drive the research forward and we started the Fox G1 Research Foundation. One of the most interesting things that some of the researchers that we work with have identified is that sort of network of domino impact seems to overlap with other more common genetic causes of things like autism and epilepsy and schizophrenia. This is a mission for us beyond just helping the small number of children that right now have been diagnosed with Fox G1 syndrome. It's about really creating something that's lasting and creating breakthroughs in medical science that are going to change the lives of millions of not just children, but adults. If our mission to save our children leads to so much more and can save so many more children, this is something we have to do.